Go ahead, Bill. Hello, Bill. I'm Bill. I'm the bottom of the shift to play percussion and a few other things and uh, like fun. Oh, I'm Josh. I'm Josh. Enjoy long walks on the beach. Sunset. Sunset. Like this one. Oh, have a yeah, And nice. this is? I'm uh, David. I also play several instruments for the Barnwell Shift. Mm. And I love being awesome. So, my question <laughs> is... <laughs> well, you are pretty awesome. Okay. okay, so my question is, how did you guys all meet? How did you guys get to know each other and how did you meet? Uh, well, they're they're from Kansas and I'm from New Jersey. And we're brothers. Uh, yeah, we're we also brothers. We That's how they met. Okay. Yeah, we were born a couple years apart. Met through a mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
funky beats, stuff like that. All music's good. You just got to good music out there. We rage against the musical machine. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit, you know. Yeah, and it depends knows. on the guitar, too. Like, with yeah. us pushing as many it- instruments, like, acoustically, I started playing the acoustic guitar with, like, Jack Johnson scene, Dave Matthews kind of thing, you know what I mean? But then when you get into the electric guitar, you can't play that kind of music, you know what I mean? Or if you get into a didgeridoo, like, you know, what influence your didgeridoo play, you yeah, know? Like that <laughs> um, I was in a show in Scotland for a couple of months, and we met some guys from Madagascar that played them in their show, mm-hmm. and I just thought it was the coolest thing. So we just, one. Yeah, so I, I picked one. That was the coolest thing. The next, day, <laughs> the next day, literally, in Edinburgh, Scotland, you know, there was a guy selling them that made out of bamboo, so I bought one and started to go after it. <laughs> Maybe right now, um, you guys should go ahead and tell um, people which instruments you play, like all the instruments that you play. Because it seems pretty diverse, and there's yeah. a lot of experimentation that's yeah. been going on at this point, so I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Well, the primarily, music. I play drums, but I definitely do a little harmonica playing. He doesn't like to play the bass, but he's, he's, a, he's, a, good, <laughs> he's a good bass player, he but does, he doesn't he play it enough, play. so he's the first instrument I ever picked up, and I just the bass. never. Yeah, it, it, I, I do it more to serve the purpose of having a bass and starting songs. Well, that's, that's, that's basically it. When we, when we first started playing songs, our first few songs, you know, he had some songs and I had them, so we, we started putting the music together, and whoever wasn't playing bass had to play bass. Oh, gotcha. Oh, right. <laughs> three people in life. Like but but, I've, step but up. where he doesn't like it, I've grown to love it. I yeah. love the bass. It's work out. Just damn these small hands. <laughs> 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 we do experiment. We make it work. It's cool. It's true. But don't you also, don't you also play mandolin? Mm-hmm. When did you pick up? Harmonica. Uh, mandolin was just, I got to a stage before these guys were in the picture, really, before Josh had moved out here, where I was just held in on owning the room, playing it, recording mm-hmm. it, just experimenting, and really enjoyed that. So I built a collection, fell into, mm-hmm. like, kind of some folk, bluegrass kind of music, and mm-hmm. made the feeling that I have, we have a band in we haven't broke out in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, really the, first, the first time that I came to the house to jam, I walked into this music room and I was like, you're, Play just, room. you're just like me. Like, you've just been gathering <laughs> just a massive amount of instruments. It's ridiculous. I had to sell most of them before I came out here, but. Yeah. We definitely have things that don't get played. We have a trumpet and stuff. Who plays trumpet? We don't have them. Well, we fart around with it, but it's not. Okay. Yeah, it's never anything we can take to the stage. Oh. But yet. we have an appreciation for, I mean, more instrumentation is better. You know, I mean, the world's got a lot going on for yeah. instruments and such great sounds, so we're very open to that. So I always Cash. play. I always like to play whatever's in a you know a range of being a, you know, enjoyable for others, but still fun for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you, Josh? What instruments do you play? Um, pr- I prefer stringed instruments. So I started out on the violin. I play the cello now every once in a while. Break it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, guitar. You know, like like strings. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I'll play. I'll pick up and mess around on anything. You know, I think we all have that ability inside of us, really, the desire to like. You know, if something sounds cool like the bow like try to mess around on it yeah. and try to get it and it's just jack of all trades. Like a didgeridoo, <laughs> kind of a circular <laughs> breeze with a didgeridoo. Like he pushes, they push my limits with a different type of instrument that, you know, we're all perfectionists kind of at the end of the day. We don't just want to slap a bunch of stuff up there just because yeah. we think it's cool. No, your sound is, um, like I said when I saw you guys laugh at Larry's, it's just, it's funny because like you, a lot of people for a while, especially when we first started playing, would see us like to play acoustically. Yeah. For a handful of times, and not see us, you know, feel like full electric show. Even though we do go acoustic during the electric show. Yeah. It's just different when everything's going and it's amplified and it's you know cranking. Yeah. And it's definitely different. I mean, our sound is different when we're when we're you know fully. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> so my other question is too is like if you guys with being perfectionist, how do rehearsals run? Do you guys? They're a mess. <laughs> They're an absolute mess. Yeah, it's like you guys set a time, there's a spontaneous thing. Oh, we're trying to do it, but it ends up being kind of going with the flow. Yeah, it, it, it definitely trying. It, it definitely goes with the flow. But if we have something coming up, we have something coming up that we know we want to really tighten everything up for. We, we get, we get, yeah, we pump it out. How long do the rehearsals usually last? Not fifteen minutes. <laughs> Dang, you guys are not No, uh, it depends. Oh, wow. Anywhere from an hour to a few hours, I guess. It depends Depending. on what we're doing. And like when we first started out trying to write all the music, and then, you know, there's a lot of time that goes into all this. And now we want to get it more into recording. There's even more time that we're going to have to drive into it. So we also have Barnwell Studios. We do yeah, have we recording do. set up. Yeah. Yeah. 
I saw that. That's really nice that you have everything in house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've had some local artists record there, and it sounded good. So mm -hmm. you know, kind of testing the waters a little bit with that. So. So who writes the songs and who comes up with the songs? Is it all three? The Combination. Two? Yeah, it's, it's either one guy has a song and then everybody kind of just you know plays along with it and you, then you figure out your parts or it's a collaboration we've done. We've done it always. There's no like one per there's no producer necessarily or anybody calling the shots so it's, uh, it's kind of like a... Well, we I all try. <laughs> yeah, we all try. <laughs> It's, okay. it's, it's almost great. like a Kakua in a way. There, there, there have been people before who are just like, you know, if some, some of our songs, depending on what we want to play, you know, if, I, if I'm playing drums and Josh is playing guitar and singing and Bill wants to play harp, he plays harp and there's nobody playing the bass. And sometimes people have been like, you know, you should get, you know, four to jump on the bass with those songs. And we're just like, dude, we're three such strong personalities. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way I would want to add him. I mean, some people can come and jam and, yeah. we love that. and jump in here and there. That's yeah. awesome. But as for the core group, well, it becomes a marriage, like three yeah. people and adding four versions. Well, it's just it's a lot of time. Plus, commitment. plus, who says that there's got to be, you know, why does that have to be bass, drum, guitar, every song? You know, we at first we were kind of, I think, we've had this discussion where we were like, ah, maybe it's not strong enough without a bass, but now we're just like, whatever. Whatever the song calls for, that's what we're going to play. And we just hope to express the music as true form as we feel it, and then if people like it, they like it. Right. Mm -hmm. really, there's no rules on that. No way things are done. Right. So, are there any like themes to your songs or things that you guys always tap into? I think every song has its own theme or like its own uh, meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's different between each band member, and I think it's different between each person that hears it. Yeah. So uh, my question is, like, when you write a song, what's it more geared to, towards? Because some people write more happy songs, and some people write more serious songs or depressing songs. Um, that's <laughs> depressing. <laughs> no, uh, Reflective songs. Minor I've, for a long time, my mind have been all pretty, pretty light and just fun and groove, you know, groove oriented and kind of stuff like that. But lately, I really want to get into, you know, with more kind of serious, deeper kind of topics and, and messages and things like that. Because and I think I think we're all together there. And I think you know because I love music. I love playing music just to play music, and I just love when you know people just get up and dance and have a good time because I think. A song can have a, a, a particular message. It doesn't have to, though, because you can just whatever you know. If you if you had a hard day and you come to see Marvel shift at the end of it, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna forget. That's, you know, awesome. that's the point. But and then on the on the other hand, you, you but if there if your song does have a strong message, you know, it's just that much more you know, meaningful. And I kind of feel like we have a we kind of come to this um, maybe not all of us in whatever levels, but this responsibility to kind of show how we feel through our music and we kind of feel. You know, pretty passionate at this point in the game in life that mm -hmm. there's definitely an important time where really to, to definitely stay true to your colors be and be honest with how you see the world and represent yourself for what your real values are and ours is, it's, it's all about fun that's the icing you know, like the, right. cake is, the cake is the most important thing and the music is just an accompaniment to that so mm -hmm. we definitely try to keep an awareness more and more now than ever which, yeah. is, which is why we and, and another thing that we started to do especially over the last year or so is work with charities and stuff like that because just even though it's not the easiest thing because money's always tight but yeah, know, we'll tell, still tell us a little bit more about the charities and organizations that you have been a part of in the community group. Well the one we're working with is Coast Keeper first. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where it all started. Yeah, yeah tell true. us about uh, San Diego Coast Keepers. Well, our first gig with them was just kind of a when we were just started playing music together we had an impromptu opportunity to play down at that museum and Bar down the gas plant. Yeah, the East Street. Called, called, yeah. Something real. Yeah. But it was for a Coast Keeper Foundation, and we checked them out. We thought it was cool, and they offered for us to open the show. There's like five or six bands, um, and it just was. Uh, it was kind of a wacky night. We ended up Bill ended up doing the sound for everybody, which wasn't so bad. <laughs> but ever since then, we've been working with them. They're great. They're uh, they've been around for a long time, just you know keeping you know coastal waters clean and drinking water and the oceans and stuff. But they do a lot of this runoff testing and stuff. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a great organization. It's local, which we're all about. So. Yeah, I mean, they, they do so. I mean, Worf Surfer, or Dave, I guess, you know, he has some ear issues, so he can't get in the water all the water, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I'm a surfer, and there's a lot of people, there's a whole community here that I respect a whole hell of a lot because, you know, being from Kansas, like me and Bill, like, we didn't have the opportunity to have a beach real close. And so I think a lot of people take that for granted. I think it's really easy. Like, I know me, I'm not perfect. I've thrown stuff out my window, trash or whatnot. 
But now it's like because of the Coast Keeper and because of beach cleanups and things like that, it makes me more conscious about like my own self and uh, you know, I don't know. It's not the as much as we love. You know, I think we would all say as much as we love our music and everything like that. It's not just about the music. You know, mm-hmm. there's a whole another big portion of life. You know what I mean? Other than that, that you have to kind of like keep it out with everything else. So. so, how did you guys get involved with Charity One? Uh, you know, we want a conversation in the truck, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We were driving from a show. <laughs> <laughs> we were coming back. Yeah, we were coming back. Yeah, we were talking about, we, like we wanted that. to work with a charity for, like, the, for the duration of the summer or something like that, and we just started talking about how we thought, like, you know, because water is, clean, right. clean drinking water is such a huge problem for so much of the world, and, you know, something we, we, we probably take for granted. It's a basic basis. Clean, clean water is yeah, like, yeah. even in the United States, there's a lot of water rights issues water is the basis of all life and it's the most important thing and like if it's the ocean water or if it's drinking water or something like that there has to be I mean there has to be some things that we hold you know higher than other things and the basic human right to have water to drinkable water to not have to I mean in Africa it's so far extended to have to walk you know eight miles you know, round trip with a gallon, right. gallon of nasty water, a gallon jug on your head. Mm-hmm. Right. So we get to we get to live in San Diego and we get to grill up a nice dinner tonight and go play a, <laughs> a show at a bar and have fun with a bunch of friends and stuff. And we can't raise raise a couple of dollars for something like that. Yeah. And yeah. Why, why, why bother them? Most? But every, every drop counts. Yeah. Like we yeah. realize we could do something. Like when you're like, what do I do? Well, we just kind of had that moment in the car. Like we got to do something. Right. We can't. Or try. Why wouldn't we? You know. When we when we got up, when we went online to check out different charities, we found my charity water, um, charitywater.org. It, it's it, we like that one especially because it it's sustainable. It's, they actually go and implement you know plumbing and clean water systems of some kind to a place that didn't have it before. Is that and then they what? T- What's that? Is it worldwide? Yeah. Or yeah. Or they don't, I think they, they only they focus on like South America, Africa, like yeah, Southern Africa. Yeah. But it could, pop up, it could pop up. It could pop up anywhere. Wherever they see that there's a problem, and and they they teach that you know they they teach all the locals there how to you know how to fix it if you know something breaks down or something like that. So it's sustainable and it's, it's just a it's a great thing. I mean the the one thing when we first went on their website, but one of the stats they're always flashing is six six thousand people die a day from food related or water related illnesses, and most yeah. of them are kids. And it's contamination of water and some lack of clean water resources. <coughs> Something that is going on on the same planet with all the parties and all the good times. So it's like, you know, at least being conscious of it and, right. and giving something back to it. Just to honor the fact that we're lucky. You know, right. Just to honor the fact that we're blessed. So just gratitude. Yeah. Low gratitude, I guess. And they're, mm-hmm. e- they're super easy to work with, too. I mean, they, they put, have a platform together with GPS tracking yeah. where you can see the actual, what you know, where your money's going and 100% of your proceeds go through that issue. Right. Specifically. Yeah, you, know, cool. so, you know, when you don't have a lot of time, you know, it helps out to have an organization like that. Right. Yeah, I definitely checked it out. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, so how did you guys get involved with the San Diego Strip Lady? Uh, we're just mutual friends, I guess. We, uh... <laughs> A friend of ours, and uh, was, you know, friendly with the, with the president, or I guess she's uh, she stepped down. Yeah, she stepped down. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's um, not Lisa. With Michelle, so yeah, you know, we, we're, we're just we're friendly with her, and she's and they're always having events and stuff. Really good events. They put on a lot of really good stuff, and mm-hmm. they do they do a lot of good good stuff in San Diego. So another so group that appreciates the water is always exactly. Uh, so it's almost like <laughs> you know, the more we talk about it, and even just this conversation right now, it's like we're kind of focusing on that that basic element of you know water and whatnot because mm-hmm. it makes everything. You know what I mean? But uh, it's just so simple. You know, it's, it's it's one thing that everybody I think can get behind in any kind of way, whether you're a surfer, especially you know women out surfing. That's a huge empowerment type of thing too. You know, so you know more kudos to them. Like the more surfers out there, the better. You know, I mean. It, Watch out. <laughs> 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 Get foam boards or something like that. Yeah, I got smacked by a board the other day. It was not cool, but nah. whatever. Um, so, what genre of music would you classify your band to be? Schizophrenia. Yeah, <laughs> Par- paranoid schizophrenic. My dissociative identity <laughs> should be the category we're on. on IT. No, we just like a lot of stuff and we just play a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, so. it's pretty eclectic. We used to throw around uh, folk funk when we first started. Because a lot of it kind of seemed like it was that way. Because a lot of the rhythms are kind of funk oriented. Yeah. A lot of there's you know you hit a lot of kind of funk grooves, but um, there's rock in there though. Yeah, there's a lot of there's plenty of rock now, especially since you know Josh has gotten more and more into you know, the electric guitar. We just when we first started jamming, it was just 
want the acoustic, but uh, but yeah. it, some of it's just straight rock. And well, now we're evolving into cellos, and then we, we just, just yeah, no, it's, it's not gonna last. Like, it's almost like world music. We like we like the world. We like the world mindedness, and that comes out. You know, did you do shift rock? Really? You know, mm -hmm. coin our own shit. Good dog. Yeah, know? shift yeah. rock. <laughs> That's what I we think are. that your your skills are actually evolving and getting stronger. So I guess my question now is, do you guys have exercises that you do, like particular skills or riffs, or just music that you like to practice to? Or should? <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely should. We definitely should, and I definitely don't. Yeah, we don't. We're, we're kind of rustic, I guess. I'm unrefined in a way. Cause yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a shame. Yeah. I mean, who knows how well we would play if we actually did exercise and things like that. Raise uh, the ball. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> we write that on. You gotta do it though. I mean, yeah. just try to play as much as you can in, in, in any way. You know, it's as simple as that. You know. Yeah. But and then you'll come across riffs that, that you'll kind of start pushing your limits to and everything like that. And like, you know, that's what I try to do. I just try to play as much. It's almost like surfing. Like, I don't get out as much as I need to. And I know it, and it kills me. But it's like the mindset of just getting, just going. Just like, don't worry about the conditions. Just go. Yeah, and know? I, I think, I think what will basically happen is I think we all do the same thing where. If I, I, I I'll hear something in my head and I can hear how I want to play it, yeah. and uh, you just play it over and over again until you're able to play what you heard in your head. Mm, that's basically the same yeah. thing you guys do. Yeah, you find a, you find something that's internal and you externalize it. You yeah, know, and you do it as best nice. you can. Yeah. So. You, you try it the first time when you hear it in your head and you're like, shit, I can't, from I can't, I can't play that. And you, so you just keep getting after it until you can, until you can do it. So you can get it. Yeah. Are there like challenges in your band that you have faced and overcome and still how did you overcome them? Definitely sometimes it gets contentious with, you know, two of us being brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that happens pretty rough sometimes. You know, like, I'm his older brother. <laughs> and of One of us being a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs>
just a, it's just a, it's a great vibe and it's close by and stuff like that. But you know, you people care. They raise some money for the, the yeah. you know, charity water. That yeah. group of people that the bar having fun still appreciated that, and that was pretty cool. Oh, they do that. That's no, like a hundred, two hundred dollars, hundred sixty just yeah, we just just donations and donations, another like yeah. fifty or sixty CD sales or something. Yeah. We don't have the C D sales to the to the cause on on show, for shows like that and it's actually quite great and it's all on music online when you purchase it you get half the proceeds going right to charity water. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, sure. Fantastic, I like that. So do you guys ever get nervous before a performance and how do you get over it? Maybe nervous. Uh, at this point you're just like eh. When we're doing the sound, you, you know get nervous. I think the only way the only thing the only way that we get before a show mm -hmm. is we get uptight about it the sound. That's pretty okay. much it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ever get nervous because we're just turning the beat up. I'll be right back. We're just up, you know, we're just playing and having fun, and you know, we we kind of, you know, it, I mean, not that we don't care if we screw up because we do. But, but sound but is important. Yeah, the, the, uh, we just want we always want to make sure that the sound is going to be good. Yeah, you know? so everyone can do that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's, so. it's selfish too, man. I don't want to be listening to myself on the selfish <laughs> shit. You know? Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's two different things. Two different things. I can't hear what he's doing. Yeah, the on stage you know? sound is bad. That's bad. But it's, yeah. it's even worse if the, if the, if the audience sound is, you know, that's bad. So how do you guys deal with mistakes, like, when you hear the other person, or it's like, oh, oh, that's kind of off. How do you deal with mistakes? You just keep going on. Oh, yeah. No, you just play right through it. You we just don't, try to we don't really laugh. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, there's more mistakes than you would think, like, on recordings that we've done, or, like, especially live on the belly up. I mean, there's a couple things that, that were just complete outright mistakes, but they came through somehow. So uh -huh. it's almost like in times of need, you don't kind of lift each other up yeah. and, like, just try to, <laughs> you know, like, the whoop <laughs> and yeah. like, try to hold it and be like, okay, we're going to try to work this yeah. out somehow. Yeah, well, I, tried, really I tried my best to completely wreck a song. <laughs> Josh, Josh wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> oh, man, that was a good time at the Aztec Jury. I was just like, yeah. oh, my God, he's yeah. like yeah. yeah. That's so funny. You were just saying some stuff on the mic. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. How do you guys balance like music and like, life obligations? It must be hard, especially between three people. It is. You know? So it how is. do you guys do that? Make time. You have to just make it time. And yeah. If you're committed to it, if you see the value in making the time, but you're still trying not to get sucked in too far and you know, let it take away from the important stuff. But yeah. There's always time for it. And I, th I think we're getting to a point actually right now really where we want to start playing more and working less however, however we're going to get it done <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. honestly it's just you know that you you just make lifestyle adjustments yeah and you just don't need it very much money sure. you know and yeah. if we can make and if we can make more money playing then we have to work other jobs less I mean, yeah. that'd be fantastic so sell our kombucha at the show <laughs> Well, um, do you guys have any current projects? What were some of your past projects as far as like albums or recordings and what's the current project? We have no current projects. Well, we have a, we have <laughs> we have a, an understanding that we're we're going to make a priority to start recording songs and playing a lot just because we do have the resource here at the house. So yeah, yeah, that requires making even more time. Yeah, yeah. we're kick, yeah. kicking around more thoughts at this point. I mean, you know, once we have to get everything up and running and whatnot, but you know, there's a lot of there's with where we're headed as far as a band, there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of organizations out there that that need some kind of, you know, somebody to basically spread awareness about them and stuff like that. So we're trying to, you know, partner with the right people, you know, trying to keep the whole local thing going. And, um, you know, there's there's been a lot of good feedback in Oceanside from a lot of local business owners that really enjoy what we do and that give us a lot of, you know, cool shows at the pier and, like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, as we kind of, yeah, <laughs> as we kind of keep, you know, going on the path, it's just things are going to present themselves, and, you know, we're, uh, like, the Lakota people, you know, doing an album for them, I mean, it's just the arrangements and everything that goes with it, because, you know, we're, we're all, uh, you know, talking about time, it's kind of hard to have enough time to be your own producer, your own, yeah. uh, that's why people hire other first yeah. show. It's funny, I mean, it's funny, too, because I, I think, I think we're, we're le much less interested in recording anything we written already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But there's a hunger for writing new stuff, which could coincide nicely uh -huh. with, with, with the recording, I, which I think what I think is going to happen is the new stuff will be the stuff that gets yeah, recorded. So I think the next the next step for all of us is just recording more and recording and recording and trying to figure out a way to do it either here or wherever, you know what I mean, to have projects to work on. That's what a band does. And not just for the sake not of just go having out. more music, yeah. but hopefully to, to, to kind of mirror how we feel about the things that matter, that we think matter, that we feel 
expect more than just out of the world. So, getting that out there to, to hopefully, you know, it strikes a chord in him. And we've seen it, you know, we do speak from a place of, a place of honesty and just compassion. People respond to that. Yeah, that's true. Like that's, 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 yeah, I mean, there's enough party music. There's enough <laughs> shaker booty, you know, twerking, whatever. There's enough of that. Like, so we like to, we still like to have a good time. We like to party. Yeah. We're kind of like, we're kind of like the Beastie Boys. Oh, Green okay. Green yeah. Dave, Dave well, might twerk later tonight. We're all just never know. <laughs> we're all just about partying and dumping beer on people and stuff. <laughs> that reminds me, uh, what's your favorite beer? Favorite beer uh, all around? Break water. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, anything, yeah. Water. Any, any, anything from break water to all around with me. <laughs> right on the corner of Seagate Drive. Seagate is one of them. A good local brewery, definitely. Breakwater. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. DMJ, uh, DMJ IPA. Oh. We're, more, we're, we're more kombucha drinkers. Oh. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah. Talk about kombucha. Not a lot of people know. I didn't know until I was brought over to the house and I was given it. But anyway, go ahead. I just fermented tea. It's, it's an old recipe, thousands of years old from, from Asia, essentially. And it's the way they used to preserve. So you just make sweet tea and add the live culture. It ferments and you add fruit juice, so it's refreshing and turns out it's good for you, too. We got hooked on it, so it helped us get some help. And so. Bill makes it more good. Oh, nice. Is this your batch right here that we're taking? Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. And do you guys have, okay, this is just a random question at this point. Do you guys have any neat um, tattoos that have a lot of meaning to you? I know that you have one, right? Recently? All, the, all of them have a lot of meaning to me. <laughs> um, the most recent one, maybe. Uh, most recent one, this one's just a collage of just different, like, musical instruments and stuff like that. Yeah. With my, uh, my, the strap on my guitar with my grandfather's strap, and that's, oh, that's, that's what my it. favorite part of that whole thing. Oh. But I also have New Jersey on my calf, which is a big deal for me. <laughs> That's oh, I that's brought. what that was. I'm all, what is that? I saw it somewhere online. I'm all. You don't have to say it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's more real than you know. <laughs> How about you guys? Well, we both have our family crest. Oh, okay. I have it on this arm. It's, yeah, it's a family crest. We got all three together. We have a third brother. That one of these guys decided, let's get the family crest. Okay. Yeah, we just, <laughs> so he'll take the credit. And that, that's <laughs> we always that year for We always talk about it. Mom, it but I got the got it first. Uh, all three of you together? More or less. Uh, oh, okay, I, gotcha. My brother and I, he was there, but yeah, like, mom, it's pretty cool for being not really probably wanting her son tattooed up. We uh, went together like right around Christmas, and she was like, real, real cool. Was, but Where did the family pets come from? I mean, like... It is German. It's German, last okay. Name, our last name is German. So oh, gotcha. So we got uh, an interesting <laughs> kind of... Yeah, like, you can blame him <laughs> 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 There's a what? There's a neat what? There is a naked lady on top. Only oh, okay. Only boobies. Only boobies. Only boobies. I'm just showing the feminine. And they're like cartoony boobies anyway. Yeah, like boobies, you know? <laughs> no, the feminine is very important. We support, um, what is that? Uh, I have boobies. Oh my gosh, tell us please about um, your fourth member here, Cash. Hello, Johnny Cash. Oh, that's, that's Johnny Cash. He's, uh, we found him, we found him wandering the <laughs> street. <laughs> covering really? garbage. No. <laughs> we got him at the Oceanside Farmer's Market one night because I was getting rid of these little pit bull mix with the American Bulldog and yeah. cute little puppy. Yeah. So he was like, we're giving him away and something something about him. We took him home and, and he just kind of, he grew up with us, you know, with the music, of course. Like How old He'll is go he? in there. He's three now. Yeah. But he'll go in there and sit on the floor while we're playing some times. And, and yeah, he loves to be in there. Yeah. We used him as a base yeah. for a, a logo we kind of did with the three likenesses of us on him. Cause he's kind of like that. Our, our, common, our common little buddy thread, I guess. He hit a dog. Yeah. So, he's not the guardian of hell. Like, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I read that too. I was like, oh, okay. And what about like um, that door knocker? There's a, a red cover with a door knocker. Yeah. What is that for? What is that? Do you still have that up? You don't even have that up anymore. Oh, okay. That's okay. yeah, yeah. just a weird door knocker you had on that we need a poster out of or something. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, okay. I, I like where is that door? Where is the door knocker? <laughs> I was looking at him all. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah. probably eating. Yeah, go eat. Oh my gosh. 